In 2008, Pixar released WALL-E, a movie that blends together sci-fi space adventures with a sweet and tender love story between two robots. But WALL-E is the first Pixar movie to feature live-action actors with Fred Willard's character and of course the clips from the 1969 musical Hello Dolly. But why were these live-action elements included and how does it help us fall in love with WALL-E as well? When Wally was first announced in 2007, having just released the highly acclaimed Ratatouille, people were excited to see this brand new idea, but there was skepticism around using live action elements. They stressed they're not doing something like Happy Feet. Nobody wants something like Happy Feet. Oh, baby. But I remember being worried that this was an early sign of Pixar's starting to transition into making exclusively live action movies. But no, they remain animation first and were busy working on sexy cars. Wow. Hey, it's not my fault they give the cars big kissy lips. Stop judging me! People from the real world have appeared throughout Pixar's history. Soul has famous mentors. Cars features many celebrity car soners like the Queen. Finding Dory has Sigourney Weaver voice herself. I'm Sigourney Weaver. Coco includes Frida Kahlo. Toy Story 3 mentions Lincoln Logs, meaning Abraham Lincoln exists. I don't think those were Lincoln Logs. Toy Story 1 has a Mickey Mouse clock, meaning Walt Disney exists. And wait, if Disney exists, does Pixar exist as well? Does the Toy Story movies exist within Toy Story? But this was real life actors within a Pixar film. And I don't mean celebrity voice actors like Usher playing an Usher. You're my biggest fan. Good uh, to see. I'm, I'm your biggest, big, biggest fan. The only time this has happened since is the audio of a shopping channel in Up and Luca including a clip of the 1958 film Big Deal on Madonna Street. But even in those instances, the real world people didn't play as big a part as they do in Wally. So let's look at these moments and see what they really bring to the world of Wally. -E. God, can you imagine how weird Wally -E would have been if he found a different film? And now, a word from our sponsor. Hey. Breaking news, the city is being invaded by a 300 foot tall virtual private network many people are calling the Surfshark VPN. We know nothing. Breaking news, we now know everything. Surfshark VPN will protect you from malware and hackers, even on public Wi-Fi, but who will protect us? Breaking news, I'm wearing a hat, and this just in, Surfshark is able to access content not available in your country, thanks to its 3200 servers in over 95 countries, nowhere is safe. We now turn to our reporter live from the United States. Howdy! <laughs> Breaking news, by clicking the link in the description, you'll get 83% off your Surfshark subscription, plus three months extra for free. This will please the Surfshark VPN, who promises they will stop crushing news anchors. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Now I'll sing you a song. Well... The history of Hello Dolly is really bizarre. In 1835, there was a short farcical play called A Day Well Spent, which got extended into an 1842 German musical, He'll Have Himself a Good Time. This got a British adaptation in 1981 called On the Razzle, and an American adaptation as the 1938 comedy The Merchant of Yonkers. But that flopped, so this was rewritten again, this time to alter the minor character of Dolly into the show's centerpiece in 1954's The Matchmaker. And this formed the basis for a musical adaptation in 1964 called Hello Dolly. Whew. So the film is based on a musical, based on a play, based on a play, based on a musical, based on a play. Wow. And like previous adaptations, this was also a flop. And a big expensive one at that. But given how much it took to get to this point, it's honestly a miracle this production even exists. Which goes to show, if at first you don't succeed, just wait a hundred years and somebody else will fix it. Oh, hey, that's the plot of Wally. -E. While developing Wally, -E, director Andrew Stanton wanted to juxtapose the apocalyptic, futuristic setting with some jolly old fashioned music. French swing music was considered, but scrapped after it featured prominently in 2003's The Triplets of Belleville. That's when a song on his iPod played Put on your Sunday clothes from Hello Dolly. Stanton had actually starred in a high school production of Hello Dolly, so he was very familiar with the show. So once the rights were secured, it was decided to work it in. Wally was already pretty developed by this point, so the movie took a little engineering to now feature two songs from Hello Dolly. Put on your Sunday clothes, and it only takes a moment. 
A third song, Dancing, was considered for even Wally's space ballet, but the composed soundtrack worked much better. So scenes had to be reworked, demonstrating the effect this movie within a movie had on Wally, such as playing music while he works or using the lid of a trash can as a hat, which introduces another element. We're not just hearing the music, we're also seeing it. And it's at its most effective when Wally watches It Only Takes a Moment. When it comes to storytelling, Pixar are among the world's best, but for the story to work, we have to empathize with and care about the characters. And for this to work, the character has to have a clear goal. Woody wants to be the favorite toy. Marlin wants his son back. Carl wants to keep his promise. The more this goal is rooted in emotion, like insecurities, paternal instincts, or sorrow, the more proactive they will be to take action, and the more invested we are as we follow their journey. But what about Wally? They have no clear face to emote with, and they have very little spoken dialogue. How do we make their goal clear? And how do we make it emotional? Even before the inclusion of Hello Dolly, holding hands was already the planned way of expressing Wally's desire and longing for love. Especially after a whole sequence showing just how alone he is. While Luxo Jr. was a big inspiration, Stanton cites the book Man Watching, a study of human expression, like how a gesture in one country might be offensive in another. Don't you talk about my mother! <laughs> but one commonality in almost all cultures is showing affection by holding hands. A simple, universal understanding no matter what the language. It was just this light bulb of like, that's how my character can say I love you when he can't say that phrase. Wally says nothing here because they don't need to. This small gesture says it all. And it only takes a moment to know how Wally feels. Although this be quite a little cheating, creating a fake close up of this one very brief moment where they actually hold hands, Art is a lie. Nothing is real. But did they need to use this live action footage? Couldn't they have just reanimated it? They usually animate whatever's on the TV. And what about Fred Willard? I mean, nothing against the beloved comedian, but did he really have to be live action too? I've seen people say that the live action humans felt a little jarring, which I can kind of see. Same with the toddler like animated humans on the spaceship Axiom. Like seeing the generations of ship captains get less real-life human and more cartoony the longer they stay, getting more and more complacent to the luxuries of technology, and losing something of themselves in the process, their humanity. There's another moment that utilizes live-action elements, when the captain is learning more and more about Earth. Mirroring Wally's own reaction to Hello Dolly, it also starts to unlock a forgotten sense of wonder and yearning. I don't want to survive! I want to live! And that's what the live action elements bring to this film. Humanity. Can't get more humanity than actual people, I guess. They could have just animated all the live action elements, sure, but replacing the natural with the artificial is what made this mess in the first place. So let's keep it real. Some audiences balked at the environmental messaging of the film, which Pixar deny was the aim, but you know, it's there. Stop being cowards. But there's a definite, clear, anti-consumerism message, how capitalism is destroying the planet. Hey Disney, take notes. And despite the crushing isolation and programmed sense of thankless duty, the little robot managed to find humanity just laying around in the trash. The plant might be the MacGuffin to show life is returning to Earth, but it's Wally who brings back the humanity. Their caring curiosity and wonder is infectious, breaking people out of their own eternal loops and repetitive routines, stepping out of line, rebelling against the system, against their directive to find their own happiness and gradually save the earth too. And it began when Wally met Dolly. Weirdly, this recording of It Only Takes a Moment almost didn't happen. In the Broadway musical, it's from a courtroom scene that got cut from the film. But rather than lose the song too, it was decided to relocate it to another scene. And it still faced complications. When Michael Crawford was cast for Hello Dolly, he had to fight to keep his role. The producers had tried to redub his singing, particularly in It Only Takes a Moment, but director Gene Kelly fought for him and his voice remains in the song. A victory for the natural over the artificial. Except that Marianne McAndrew admitted she couldn't sing and she did get redubbed. Nothing is real. But upon seeing Wally, Michael Crawford took Andrew Stanton out to dinner and told him of a story he never knew about Put On Your Sunday Clothes, the song that starts the movie. 
whilst recording the song, he was struggling to land that punch of the opening out there. Out there. Gene Kelly told Crawford, Kid, you gotta sing like it means more than the world. This is bigger than the universe. Just think of the stars. That take was the recording they used. And in a moment of cosmic coincidence, of beautiful, divine harmony, the opening of Wally has Crawford singing to the stars, which I think restores a little faith in humanity. I said stop judging me! This video is part of the One Musical Scene collaboration. Check out the playlist in the description for the ensemble of other channels taking part. Wally. Hello, I'm Eddie the Robot. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and special shout out to this month's patrons including Ashley Kinder, Ashley Bird McCarthy, Slow School Craft, Rusty Robot, Drift of Wolf in Effects, Asune Wave, Mo Al Kasemi, Useless Jack, James Junk, Nathan Chowi, Nati, Matthew Smith, Jake Pinkerton, Brett Halford, Joe Wood, Clem Wemsley, Liam Deeney, Joel the Gay Noodle Jennings, and Alex Weston. And if you would like to support me, then please consider joining my Patreon.